Now, President Trump vowed we were going to finally win the war against ISIS under his watch. We will find you, we will destroy you, and we will win. I would bomb the shit out of him. This is an evil, sadistic, monstrous enemy, and we must keep these killers out of our country. We're going to knock out ISIS so violently and so fast. ISIS is being dealt one brutal defeat after another. You see it. And as his first year in office closes out, there's extremely positive evidence we may be getting closer than ever. ISIS has lost now 98 percent of its territory in Iraq and Syria, according to Ryan Dillon. He's the chief spokesman for Operation Inherent Resolve. Now, look, there are still major hurdles to conquer against the terror network in Syria. But this is very encouraging news going into the new year. So my question for you, obviously, you know, Marie, that you are going to get this first. I, I could sense it. You could feel you could feel the mojo. <laughs> So, look, to ask the Trump White House, what they would say is, mm -hmm. and they do say, that the Obama administration wasn't tough enough, didn't take enough steps. We hear a lot of complaints about the rules of engagement mm -hmm. and the approach. How much of that was a strategic choice and how much of that was an error in judgment? Well, and some of that is just politics, right? right? So the strategy that has led to a virtual defeat of ISIS in the caliphate, in Syria, in Iraq, is largely a strategy that was laid out during the Obama administration by military commanders. Now, President Trump has loosened the rules of engagement. He has allowed the military to use more bombs, for example, and so I think that has helped. But for me, the bigger question is, what is the strategy going forward? There's tens of thousands of ISIS fighters who, once they lose this territory in Syria and Iraq, are going to go back to Europe. They're going to go online. They're going to radicalize people like we've seen try to commit terrorist attacks here in the U.S. So in terms of the fight against ISIS, this is a good step, but the fight is going to continue in a different and almost more dangerous way. And Katie, I, want, I do want to talk more about the online threat, the threat here domestically, all of that razzmatazz. But there's also the question about what happens in Syria next. Right. And not and one of the reasons, by the way, to give the previous administration some credit where it's due, part of the go slow was who's going to govern Syria right. and who's going to govern these fallen places. But I wouldn't argue that the ISIS strategy has been completely about Syria. It's actually been more about getting back that territory in Iraq. And so the administration has done that through, as you mentioned, the rules of engagement, which were severely downplayed during the Obama administration. It was not reported that 80 percent of the casualties in places like Afghanistan and uh, mm -hmm. Iraq happened under Obama's watch as a result of these rules of engagement, second guessing the commanders on the ground. And you can give credit to President Obama for the strategy in the last year of his term, but that was the military commanders. But you have to give credit to President Trump for actually listening to them and getting the job done. And the thing that's interesting, too, going forward as we look at the global war on terror, this is a victory now, but this is not something that has been completely solved. And we're attacking terrorists in places like Somalia. We just learned that the number of bombings since Donald Trump took office have doubled in Somalia in partnership with the, the government there, the one that actually such does as exist, is. right, yeah. such as it is. So this is going to be something we continue to fight because of the nature of the threat that we right. face. But it's a huge victory, not only just for uh, getting rid of ISIS, but also for the military to feel like they can finally do their job again. Kennedy. Are we going to have troops in Iraq and Syria forever? Uh, I feel like we are, unfortunately, in Afghanistan as well. And that's why uh, whenever we have good news, like the caliphate is 98 percent contained, you always have to wonder what's the mission creep? What's the next step? What is the ultimate goal of the United States? And, of course, there are those who make the case that there are U.S. interests that have to be secured in those places. And I think that argument gets flimsier and flimsier. And the president said as much when he was campaigning. Obviously, the realities of governing are quite different. Uh, but the success of containing ISIS is something that has to be satisfying for him. But Katie's absolutely right. You know, we can't hang mission accomplished banners because this, this can go in so many different directions. Uh, Syria has already devolved into civil war. And we've seen places like Yemen and Libya in an absolute shambles. And, you know, I hope that the president continues to indulge his non-interventionist 
streak. And he has people around him who understand the cost of human life and, and the amount of money that we have spent overseas. The president has said that himself in regards to infrastructure spending and saying, hey, why are we spending seven trillion dollars in overseas wars when we should essentially be spending that here in this country, making our bridges and roads in better nation, condition? Nation building here at home, I believe, is the preferred phrase of the last two presidents. Uh, Tom. I like the generals. You like the general. You're pro generals. Um, I mean, no. So and when he would say, "I'm going to trust," such the a general. controversial statement. Gonna bob, gonna, I, I stand with the men and women in uniform. Uh, one of the big advantages of this is that it denies ISIS and the people who now call themselves ISIS a recruiting tool. Because when the myth of the mm -hmm. caliphate was alive, right, they could say, "We are building our own nation in the desert. We are going to make this pure thing, and the caliph will be restored." And da 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 da. The physical defeat of it does deny them a recruiting point, but to everybody's point, this is really metastasized online. This is really everywhere. It's a now, digital right? caliphate. Yes, although winning is, that's why winning is important. I yeah. mean, Trump is all about winning, and it's true it, as, as regards ISIS. The more wins you rack up, the better, you know, and it's, it's down now. We want to keep snuffing it out and count up those victories. But I think this is an area where we do have bipartisanship. I mean, everybody hates ISIS, so we're kind of all together on that. I think people, you know, here I gave President Obama credit when he uh, had success in that area. I also think it was great when he went back on his word and he, he kept Guantanamo Bay. Like, I was glad he broke that promise. Mm -hmm. I think when it gets down to it, a lot of times, you know, he ran against, he said, I'm going to close Guantanamo, I'm going to change our foreign policy. But then when he got in there, the foreign policy against ISIS wasn't that dramatically changed under President Obama. I think when these presidents get in there, they do take the advice of the generals. And so I think... It's one area where there's can a lot just, of bipartisanship, even though she that, disagrees with no, me, I, Kennedy. I, with President Obama, because there were, uh, from Bob Gates to people in the Pentagon, you know, anytime they left the administration, they talked about how difficult it was because they would lay out plans for defeating ISIS, and President Obama had his own ideas for how he well, wanted Bob to Gates do it. Well, Bob Gates wasn't there when ISIS really became a threat. I think Bob Gates had other issues with the administration. The problem that Bob Gates' issues the with the administration were echoed by the problem that members President of the military Obama who was, were very high up but, in the But actually, I think you would, the president, the problem President Obama was trying to come up against is to the United States military, every problem looks like a nail and every bomb looks like a hammer. And so there have to be other tools in the American oh, toolbox. That's, that's well, not insulting I, I and oversimplifying no, anything. But, yeah. but there have to be other tools to go after threats. And I think he, he so ran he's, on. That's okay, right. But, he's droning. Okay, but, well, no, 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 listen. Civilians. He ran on ending the war in Iraq. He ran on getting Which out of Afghanistan. ISIS, by the way. I'm not saying those are good early. policy decisions, although I happen to agree with them. We were coming out of the, we are still in the longest war in America's history. In, in Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Yeah. And we have no end in sight to when these men and women are coming home. Uh, President Obama had eight years to end that war. And, and he didn't. And, and I'm not saying that was okay. Well, my, my point is, we have to look at American power, not just as bombs, but as diplomacy, as our economic power, as right, trade okay. deals. Well, I, but I, that, that did not work very well when it came to, to ISIS, the bombing and of, of ISIS well, over, the past, and over the past year. And the, the, we the bombed a lot off. of them, is it, too. Is it a reasonable off. question to ask? What becomes of Bashar al-Assad? What becomes of Syria? Of Absolutely. It's, right. good, it's, of course. Good, it's great to have ISIS... It's great to have the people that, as Tom points out, everyone right. in the world universally hates. Well, and there are these guys. These guys are the, the New York Yankees of being hated. Right, How and there you. are serious questions now too <laughs> about uh, ISIS actually joining the ranks of the Iraqi government in right. places where it is is not stable. So there's always another problem that we're going to have to Which deal with. Which will require diplomacy to, and won't okay, just require military action. When it comes action. to diplomacy and Diplomacy's talking with ISIS with the that Taliban hasn't and worked, Afghanistan. what has worked over the past year is taking out terrorists. By Bombing more and taking off the rules of engagement. But in terms of how we move forward, you talked about these guys right. going to Europe, the, one, the ones mm -hmm. that are left who haven't been killed. That comes down to domestic policy. That is when foreign policy, whether it's in Europe mm -hmm. or the United States, turns into domestic policy and, how, policy and how we deal with our borders, how we deal with vetting of refugees and who come through a stream without any kind of background and online radicalization in these areas that have not assimilated. Okay, there's, so that there is, is one problem. area where I absolutely agree with Marie, and that is I think we have to be more mindful than ever of, you know, what I refer to as the digital caliphate. Right. Mm -hmm. As absolutely, people yeah. who have scattered uh, the 45,000 fighters who were fighting with ISIS, those people right. who are now, I mean, they're down to 1,000. That means you've got 44,000 uh, conceivably, at least the ones who aren't dead. Yeah, right. yeah and, and they have gone to places in Western Europe, and, and they are here in the United mm -hmm. States.
states. And they are radicalizing in ways that we have seen here in New York City right. with right. two terror attacks this year. Or well, you what? don't even have to travel there anymore. It used to be you could tra you could track someone's travel and it was a red flag. You don't even have to. You can go online. Yeah. Tom, are we, do we end up with regime change? Are we going to end up orchestrating regime change in Syria, do you think? Well, I don't, there's another example of, you know, you say the presidents get flexible when they get into office. Real flexible. President uh, <laughs> Trump, he changed his view on Syria. Remember, he came That's in true. and he says, we're not going to, you know. What do I care? Yeah. Yeah. And then he, we, how long did it take him to start bombing Syria? So he, he changed, presidents change when they get in here. That's why you got to trust so, the so I, but, It's not. That's why the, you so take politics. Do, do we end up? Do we end up confronting Russia, and do we end up taking out Assad, or, no. we, or does he stay? Well, maybe if we can get this investigation to come to a close, then we can. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe Trump offers Mueller a deal. Uh, let me off the hook. I'll take out Assad. Do you think we? Do you think <laughs> we not, end up taking I mean, out if, Assad? If you listen to the left, we're not fighting against Russia. We're fighting with Russia. So we're a puppet of, uh, you know, the, the Soviet regime, and, and we do whatever Putin wants. Well, they're they're not, we're not taking that. There's also throwback. a proxy war going on, and this is all about the Iranians. So yeah. it's oh, yeah? not just about Bashar al-Assad. It's about the Iranians being now the focus of this administration. So you think he stays? I don't know. I'm not going to predict that, is, but is, I do know that the administration is very focused on Iran and making sure that some, they don't creep in more than Somebody once said that Bashar al-Assad's days were numbered. That well, was technically Obama. everyone's days <laughs> are numbered. Red line. Aren't, aren't, red line. Yeah. Technically yeah. everyone's days are numbered. Aren't Look, they? Yes. The, last the, word. The 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 problem has always been if Assad's not there, what fills that void? Right. That's, That's always been the question. problem. The Look at Libya. Look at Yemen. Yeah. And it's going to be Giancarlo Stanton. Mm-hmm.